The best gifts are not material, but spiritual, not temporal, but eternal, and not earthly, but heavenly. In the book of Ephesians, we discover a rich list of what God has given to His children. Let's join Scott Pauley now as we open this portion of Scripture and take inventory of all spiritual blessings that are ours in Christ. What would you say is the greatest of the spiritual blessings that God has given us? Let me say the phrase again and uh, emphasize a certain part of the word, see if this helps, all spiritual blessings. I believe the greatest spiritual blessing that God gives to his children is the Holy Spirit. Literally, God doesn't just give us things. God gives us himself. That's who the Holy Spirit is. The third part of the Trinity, God with us uh, in this age of the Spirit, in this church age. And so we've come today in our walk through the book of Ephesians to the opening verses of Ephesians chapter number 5. In fact, the first 17 verses really all uh, go together because they describe for us life in the Spirit, a life of holiness. Uh, Let me begin with one verse. It is actually the verse that is found in parentheses. Aren't you glad that even God's parentheses are inspired? It's Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 9. It says, For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. What a verse. Let me read it again. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. He's talking about what the Holy Spirit produces in our life. Now, you'll remember that in the previous book, in the book of Galatians, chapter number 5, God actually defines what the fruit of the Spirit is. Do you remember? Galatians 5, verse 22, But the fruit of the Spirit is love joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. That's what the fruit of the Spirit is. But when you come to Ephesians chapter 5, connect Galatians 5 and Ephesians 5 in your thinking. When you come to Ephesians chapter 5, he shows us what the fruit of the Spirit looks like in an everyday Christian's life. You see, this is not theoretical. This is practical. Uh, This is not just uh, some theological thing we say we believe. This is a very personal way we're supposed to live. And so when you look at these verses in Ephesians chapter 5, you get a picture of a life filled with the Holy Spirit and exhibiting the fruit of the Spirit in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Uh, There are three thoughts I want to give you today from these verses. First of all, uh, the fruit of the Spirit is that we walk in love. That's how the chapter begins. Be therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love, as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. So, uh, look, uh, the, the fruit of the Spirit looks like Jesus. That's right, it looks like Christ. You'll know that a person is exhibiting the work of the Holy Spirit in them when they start loving like Jesus loves. In fact, then he gives us the the opposite in contrast in verse 3, but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become a saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, that no whoremonger nor unclean person nor covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Do Do you see the contrast here? between the love of Christ and the lust of this world, uh, between living for flesh and selfishly what you can get, what you can enjoy, momentary pleasure, and instead walking in love. Uh, The fruit of the Spirit, first of all, is to walk in love. And by the way, that corresponds with the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5. Remember, the fruit of the Spirit is what's first on the list, love. So there's a beautiful parallel here, walk in love. The second thing that marks a life that has the fruit of the Spirit is not only does it walk in love, it walks in light. Listen to what the Bible says. Verse 6, Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. You see, There's a lot of people that want to talk about love, but they don't want to walk in the light. 
they want that warm, fuzzy feeling, but they don't want to live holy lives. Oh, dear friend, the spirit of love is the spirit of light. And so the Holy Spirit brings us into a life of purity, of integrity, of holiness. Remember our verse, the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. It's an upright life. It's a life lived not in the shadows, uh, not in, in the secret places, but it's a life lived openly before God and man, transparent. It's full of light. The word light, in fact, is found five times in this passage. If you keep reading, verse 10 says, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret, but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. You get the picture? Light, 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 light. Repeatedly, this emphasis on a life lived in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit producing the right things in us, always brings us into the light. If the way you're living today makes you live in the shadows, makes you hide, makes you cover things up, makes you look over your shoulder, makes you wonder if someone's going to find out, then, friend, you're not walking in the Spirit today. You're walking in darkness and not in light. And so the fruit of the Spirit, first, is to walk in love. Second is to walk in light. And then thirdly is to walk circumspectly. Listen to what the Bible says beginning in verse 15. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. What does this word circumspectly mean? Uh, The idea here is to walk in wisdom. We're walking in love. We're walking in light. Now we're walking in wisdom uprightly. We're walking in a way that becomes a Christian. And I love the beautiful progression here. We begin with love because that's who God is. God is love. And when you're walking near God, he always leads you into the light. And then it begins working its way out in every area of your life in wisdom. Listen to this, redeeming the time because the days are evil. The Holy Spirit gives you discernment to know what matters and what doesn't, frankly, what you should be involved in and what you shouldn't be involved in. Uh, I love this expression in verse 17, understanding what the will of the Lord is. We move from his love to his light to his wisdom. You know, I can't think of anything right now that we need any more than the fruit of the Spirit. In days marked by works of the flesh, we need the fruit of the Spirit. In days marked by hatred, we need love. In days marked by darkness, we need light. And in days marked by ignorance and foolishness, we need wisdom. I want to urge you today, dear friend, to let the Holy Spirit who lives inside of you, if you're a believer, to let that Holy Spirit begin to produce in you God's beautiful, precious fruit. And notice, you don't produce the fruit. The Holy Spirit produces the fruit. You just bear it. Yield yourself to the control of the Spirit of the living God today, and the Holy Spirit will produce God's love and God's light and God's wisdom in you. Stop trying to live it in your own power. You can't. You couldn't save yourself, and you cannot live the Christian life. I'll tell you what you can do. You can say to the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I'm yours. And Surrender yourself in every part to God, and the Holy Spirit will begin to work in you His fruit in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Isn't it amazing what God has made available for His people? Our sincere prayer is that you will discover all that God has for you and be led to true thanksgiving, worship, and praise. Join us again next time as we continue our study of the Word of God. Until then, thank you for listening. We would love to hear how God is at work in your heart and home. Visit us today at enjoyingthejourney.org.